know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jackson, Men's Comics, and here we are giving you that weekly comic book show. That's right, the Bolo Show. Be on the lookout. We are covering all this week's hottest comic book releases. We're covering those first appearances, the Reader Buzz books, the Variant Buzz books, and Jack's long-term play at the end. Jack, how's your new comic book day? Oh, this week's great. It's a lot of great releases. Um, definite debate over long-term play of the week. Uh, probably more than one book you could slide into that category and, and certainly make a valid argument. One of my favorite things to do after we record this show and it gets posted is come back and see what everybody else in the comment section, what their choice is for their long-term play this week. Yeah, a lot of great books. A lot of great... There's a lot of great releases. I think some might get overshadowed by some of those bigger yeah. titles, but we'll get into that in a little bit later. We're going to start right now with those first appearances. And first one we have on the first appearance this week is that new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at issue 110. We get first appearance of Roadhogs. Yeah, first appearance of the Roadhogs, a new team. Um, John Travolta, Tim Allen. <laughs> right. I, I, I would doubt there isn't some inspiration there. Um, since you literally have a team of three motorcycle uh, um, mutants. Um, but, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, this is a first appearance in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and we know that Sophie Campbell is building her world. So I think there's infinite possibilities. At the same point, I think the popularity that this issue has seen, if you're not familiar, I mean, we're talking about this thing is sold out everywhere. 110 is sold out. Uh, cover A, cover B is sold out everywhere. Um, at simplemanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com you can still get that Simplemans Comics and 616 Comics exclusive for TMNT 110 for as little as 9.99 but um but yeah th these books have been sold out at large retail the one in 10 incentive is doing really well we're hearing retailers report of shortages of the TMNT uh 110 incentive that Diamond has to deal with um, and I think a lot of this, though, is due to the, some some speculation buzz, because this was certainly a book that was talked about um, on several of the new preview shows popping up uh, uh, more and more on YouTube lately, um, as well as um, a lot of other like Instagram, Twitter type speculative uh, resources have been kind of posting about this book and talking about this book. You start to see the momentum build. So we've seen this with Ninja Turtles where people jump in, jump out. I just hope this is one of those things since this run has been so good and there's been so much new and so much introduction into the world of TMNT. I hope that some of these new investors and speculators are going to stick with us true uh, Turtles readers and realize that this is actually a great series and there's a lot of great going on. And it isn't just something they're going to jump in and jump off from one issue. Right. We've been talking about how great that series has been for yeah. a while. We've had a couple videos on this channel. So if you're interested in those, we'll put links in the description. Or you can just go to Silver Men's Comics on YouTube, subscribe, and always be notified when those videos hit the channel. But the next one we're talking about the first appearance is we get a new Werewolf by Night in a book called Werewolf by Night, number one. Yeah. And, you know, I know it's, I know it's October, right? It's Halloween. But this one's just kind of a snooze to me, if I'm being honest. And, and, I, and I look, I fully accept if somebody out there is going to get really angry with me for feeling that way. But this is just my initial judgment. Um, Werewolf by Night is, is a, a character who kind of has a history within the Marvel horror lore. But uh, a new Werewolf by Night, I'm not familiar enough with the character to understand maybe why that's significant or important i know there's been some speculation on the original character with talk of possibly tyrese being werewolf by night in the um sony marvel cinematic universe alongside um uh, jared leto's uh, uh morbius but you know it's one of those things we're gonna have to wait and see this is a new series i don't know if it's gonna be able to sustain reader buzz um and we've talked about this before on the show for anybody who doesn't realize this either like they do have to like reboot series sometimes just simply for the sake of uh, keeping yeah, license the license and the trademark. Yeah. It's like every 10 years or something like that. So a lot of times people wonder like, well, why is Marvel releasing a series? that seems like there's not a ton of demand. Well, you got to You might have to do it for licensing. So you might as well do it in October. It's kind of good timing. Um, but I will say that Jeffrey, I'm probably going to mispronounce the last name, but Vreggy, Vreggy. Um, the variant incentive, I really like that one. I think the, the colors pop real nice. I, I think that's a sharp book. Yeah, we've been talking about his variants on the, yeah. on the last call a lot. Really digging those. But you mentioned Tyrese. Well, 
his future be freed up here soon now that those uh, Fast and Furious movies are ending with the next two. Um, my opinion should have ended like eight movies ago. Isn't that right, a room? <laughs> but the next one we're talking about on the first appearance list is Fantastic Four, number 25. Yeah, first appearance of Helmsman. Um, I don't really know much about this appearance. It's not making a ton of buzz right now in the market. But you mentioned something, Brian, when we kicked off the show. And I think it's going to be really a theme when you look at this. Because I think and this is kind of why I wanted to see what people give me back for what they think their long-term play of the week is. I think this is a week where there are several good books and several books that could be total sleepers um, that are going to get overlooked by some like larger, heavily talked about books. TMNT has certainly been a book people are heavily talking about. Um, this is the second issue in a row where I got to give Fantastic Four some credit where they've had some momentum. Um, this is a first appearance, but on top of the first appearance, it's also the, a landmark issue. You get some uh, special incentives. There's some buzz on that Scotty Young uh, incentive homage to issue number one. So, um, you know, I think that they're heading in the right direction. Will this, will this first appearance be anything? I don't know. But I look at them like kind of like how my man Brian likes to coin them lottery tickets. Like, you know, it's a cover price book. I don't think this is one that you're going to see shooting up over cover price in the next few days. So, you know, if, if you're aware of it and you want to throw it in a box and ride out the wave, I have to wonder, Brian, what's the deal with Fantastic Four and how many first appearances are popping up in this new series? It, it's got to be an intentional thing. Will it turn into anything? I don't know. But the next one on the first appearance list is Catwoman number 26. We get first appearance of Father Valley. Yeah, and you know, I'm all about like evil priests. I think that is certainly, as a young um, you know, Catholic boy growing up, uh, certainly <laughs> I, had, I had my experience with uh, those uh, priests that were a little, a little scary to you, especially growing up in the Northeast, right? Growing up in the South, you tend to get the priests that um, come from like all over the world. Growing up in the Northeast, you get that old 90 year old Italian man who's been in the same church forever um, who's a little bit uh, intimidating so that always kind of gets me from a horror uh, perspective nuns and priests then nothing will scare a young uh, young uh, reformed Catholic like that but uh, um, at the same point uh, I think the real thing that got buzzed for this book first appearances are cool um, the thing that got buzzed was that Jenny Frizen variant um, yeah gorgeous I, cover yeah, amazing cover. Um, and I, I've really been digging. It's like right when we got kind of like bored with her Wonder Woman, they started to feel a bit redundant. I've dug the switch to Catwoman. Maybe they should have made that change maybe a little earlier. Um, and, I, and it makes me now curious, like, well, what's next? What's, what's going to be that next book that she's going to kind of touch and then really make those cover bees essential? Then bringing up the end of first appearances this week, we get a new Green Ranger. In Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 55. Yeah, don't know the identity yet, but a brand new Green Ranger, a new look to the helmet. Um, some are saying reminiscent of Draken. We'll see. Um, but this is going to get a lot of talk. Uh, Power Ranger fans are buzzing about A lot this of Power thing. Ranger news this week. Yes, a lot of Power Ranger news this week. What Brian's referred to is, of course, the, new, the news that Hasbro has gone ahead and greenlit the development towards a brand new film as well as television uh, franchises. It looks like they're going to start doing some television maybe aimed a little bit older, more uh, towards what we've been talking about, what we've been looking for. Um, so excited, excited to see what's going to happen that way. And uh, yeah, Power Ranger comics are going strong. A lot of talk about the upcoming Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers number one series. This is, of course, the final issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It's really rare. Like the fact that it's the final issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is enough for this issue to be important. Uh, I think we'd be talking about it. Um, but oh, first appearance of a ranger and a main ranger, right? We're not talking about an Omega Ranger or Time Force Ranger or any of these other rangers that, you know, other people may not be familiar with. We are talking about a main Power Ranger, the Green Ranger. And this is a new person taking that mantle. And I think um, even somebody who's a casual Power Ranger fan can appreciate uh, the importance of this. I also want to say shout out to Boom Studios. Um, because Boom Studios, what they, what they did really well with this is marketed it well to hardcore Power Ranger fans. The average comic collector may be sleeping on this book, um, but 
to hardcore Power Ranger fans, we produce an exclusive variant, for instance, uh, of Simpleman's Comics and the 616 Comics with Jung Young Yoon on the cover. Um, they were able to provide us with this uh, knowledge of this first appearance and be able to have this character on the cover in advance. Uh, and they didn't actually put this character on the cover of any of their own books, but we, and we are not the only exclusive retailer that has this brand new Power Ranger right on the cover. So that is super cool and a unique collectible I think that people are gonna get. It's to get a first appearance and a first cover appearance in that issue. You just have to chase down your favorite retail exclusive. So there's the first appearances in comics this week, but now we're gonna get into my favorite section of course, and that is the reader buzz. First one we're talking about, we're getting over to DC Comics. Batman's still kicking with James Tynan and we got Batman number 101. Yeah, and this to me is about Grifter because I'm a huge Grifter fan and I've been excited ever since they kind of teased that he was coming. So that's to me is what Batman 101, you're coming out of Joker War, it kind of becomes like one of those things where how do you follow up big stories? How do you how do you kind of go on that? Um, and I think it was a good, good introductory issue. It feels a lot like a number one, which yeah. is what it's supposed to feel like because they were originally planning on ending Batman at 100 and starting over with a fresh number one and James Tynan wanted to keep going with the current run. So it feels like a number one. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Yeah, it's like mixing things up. It's like bringing Alexa Bliss in with The Fiend. <laughs> but the next one on that reader buzz is we got that new issue of Venom and Venom number 29. Yeah, more Codex. Uh, just when you think uh, we're done with Codex, we're back. Uh, and again, this is a plug and play. Venom, I think, is, is Venom, Thor. Those are books that are hitting uh, reader buzz on a weekly basis. People are just scared to miss them, I think, is the biggest thing. Is it, you know, you can be a little bit late. You can, you can kind of, like, miss your favorite issue, catch it a couple of days later. You can find it at your LCS. But you get that feeling with Venom that if, like, you do not have that book on release day, you run the risk of Donny Cates doing something crazy that could make that book disappear, which is, of course, why we advocate for pre-ordering. La the last call show, final order cutoff pre-ordering, blackcapecomics.com. Uh, put your orders in, 15% off. Um, you know, I just, it, it, it's the best way to guarantee that you get a book. Um, and you just never know when Reader Buzz is going to turn into secondary market buzz. Yeah. Just don't pre-order those DC books from UCS anymore. No. <laughs> this so next one I'm going to talk about, this is one of my favorite series, right? We've talked about this before. Batman White Knight, huge fan of Batman White Knight, but I didn't pre-order this one and I didn't pick it up yet. And it's Batman White Knight, Harley Quinn number one. Yeah, I got to admit, man. I mean, I, I, one of the things I'm still bitter about is being slow to Batman White Knight. White Knight. Um, it, it kind of caught me off guard. So it wasn't until the later prints of the early issues that I jumped on. Um, but man, you know, Sean Murphy at this point, he's put out multiple volumes Multiple characters have been popular from the Harley to uh, Neo Joker to his Batman. Um, there's so much talk about a possible animated or I even believe that the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie opens up the door for possibly one day a kind of outside of the traditional Batman um, canon type movie where you could see a White Knight movie. I don't think any of these things are crazy. Um, certainly, especially with streaming and the HBO Max relationship and the type of budget it seems like HBO Max is putting into things. So anything that's possible, I certainly think animated is probably the easiest route for them to go. But because of that, I'm very bullish on all of these uh, uh, kind of uh, Sean Murphy, his, uh, his White Knight universe. And I think that this is one of those releases, Brian, where we're talking about releases that get overlooked. Uh, there was a time and a place where if momentum was different, this might've been the talked about release of the week. Uh, and, and I think that your sentiment with this, with kind of overlooking it is probably similar to a lot of people. Now it's still a Harley title. It's still a Batman title. So I doubt it's going to get under ordered per se. Yeah, I've heard a lot of buzz and a lot of people talking about it on social. Yeah. But it, yeah, because of that buzz, that's where you wonder um, it may be a book that's there today, but gone by the weekend. Um, so, and, and you know, that, when a when a book does what it's supposed to do, it where it like has buzz, but dealers like know what to expect. Yeah, that's how it should sell out. It should be there on New Comic Book Day, but by the weekend, it should be gone. Yeah, it's like being late to watching Tiger King. <laughs> but 
Don't watch Tiger King, but if you haven't watched The Cabin with Burt Kreischer on Netflix, you're cool. missing out. Yeah. Next one we're talking about on the Reader Buzz list, though, is that Robin King number one, sticking with DC. Yeah, Robin King, uh, well, you know, you talk about a character that every one of these, like, new Dark Knights death metal characters that's come out um, has been popular, but Robin King seemed to hit a little harder, um, hit more along the lines of Batman Who Laughs. Um, so they've given the same kind of treatment, right? Batman Who Laughs, we saw the first appearance come out, uh, murky, just like Robin King. Um, we saw them immediately have store exclusives with the character on the cover, just like we saw with Robin King. And now we're seeing a, a one shot, um, uh, kind of like a, a titular release that we're getting just like we did with, uh, um, Batman who laughs. So not surprised the Jeremy Roberts incentive variant. I dig, it's kind of cool to see Jeremy Roberts on an incentive because he's been doing the suicide squad cover bees. And we talked about them a few times because we've tried to kind of put people on them. But Jeremy Roberts is more of a, a unknown outside of comics artist who kind of made his way back into comics this year and has been doing some cover bees and they have like an amazing, almost boss logic movie poster look to them. And I'm, I was glad to see him kind of get some shine with this Robin King incentive. Yeah, because he did some Suicide Squad covers too, right? Yeah, incredible Suicide Squad covers. This next one, this is one of my favorite picks of this week. We even talked about this on last call. And it's from Archie Comics. We get that Madam Satan number one that ties into that Sabrina universe, right? Right. And you, we talked about damages. Now, holy damages on this one. Uh, we were literally just having a conversation about this before we went on air. That Archie paper is like dynamite paper. And if you've ever worked in a comic shop or you're a longtime comic buyer, you know what I'm talking about. That thin paper that just, man, it just doesn't hold up well in those diamond shipments, but it especially doesn't hold up well in those terrible Archie envelopes if you ever buy from Archie's website. But, you know, Ma Madam Satan, either way, one shot, uh, two covers. It was a, it's a book that we talked about, as Brian said on the last call. Um, this dark Archie stuff, I think you have to really separate the dark Archie stuff from the regular Archie stuff. Right. You can't look at it with the same, um, uh, through the same scope. The dark Archie stuff definitely kind of um, is a hit with the horror kind of younger indie crowd. Having said that, don't sleep on Archie in general as a, a dealer who sets up at conventions, well, you know, whenever those happen again um and who sells a diverse array of product you'll be surprised the crowd um that like archie variants can do so i always say to the community out there that's watching that's you know may even like poo poo this pick i would say you know don't sleep on archie you can be surprised uh at, at the popularity of certain archie variants and the scarcity yep. next one on the reader buzz this is another one a lot of people are talking about on the nd and we're talking about phantom star killer number one a lot of talk about this one. And I'll admit, I get kind of um, salty sometimes because sometimes companies that market themselves well, which Scout does, um, can turn me off because it's like uh, you're over marketing a book. I don't know whether or not I like this book or whether the hype is telling me. So I started to see, you started to see a lot of people posting Phantom Star Killer, but it was always around exclusive variants. And there are some of the coolest exclusive variants. And the person I immediately thought of is you, Brian, because the main character from Phantom Star Killer kind of has a, a little bit of a uh, Skeletor Masters of the Universe look to him. Um, and I saw a lot of cool variants for Phantom Star Killer, nobody did a Masters of the Universe homage that I could see. And I was like, man, if this was me and Brian, that's the first thing we would do. I would have done a do you poo Star Killer. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I think that the, the multitude of variants, the secret variant, the VHS secret variant, I wonder, like, is the, and I'm not, and I haven't read the book, but I wonder, like, is the book great? Or is it, like, the cool looking character that looks very familiar from our childhood and all these awesome eighties homages that we saw um, from various variants. Is that what's getting people or is the book? That'll be interesting. Reader buzz has got to back it up. So there's buzz on the first issue and we'll see. Um, so sometimes that's where scout has failed to capitalize beyond the initial, but they, they definitely of all the books I'll say on this list, I will say phantom star killer had as many, social media posts as any other book on this list except for i think maybe this one and this one's like the heavyweight championship right now of the reader buzz and we're talking about something's killing the children yeah. kicking off that brand new arc with issue number 11 and 
Boom brought the thunder with their covers alone. Right, right. Yeah, this is essentially a number one because while, yeah, it kicks off a new arc and, uh, you know, and even when Boom marketed this issue to us, right, they were telling us like, oh, yeah, this is how we like to do it, new arcs. They have never done a new arc like this. Uh, this is, this, they went hard like this is issue number one because so many people slept on the first issue. You know, now we were told we were, again, over pumping, over helping over the print run, but people didn't jump on that first issue not as much as they did say like once in future or seven secrets, or we only find them when they're dead. Uh, they continued to get more and more. That's because there probably wouldn't have been one without something that's killing the children. No doubt. That was the starter. That's the one that was the litmus test that proved the validity of what boom is trying to accomplish yeah. right once now. In future. To create our own space. Right. So it, it's one of those things where it's level of popularity certainly warrants it. So now everybody's on board. Uh, throw in a bunch of incentives, the, uh, the, the James Tynan uh, Department of Truth homage for the 1 in 100 um, is certainly uh, super cool. Uh, the Martin Simmons cover, uh, I think uh, that the way that that plays in with the Department of Truth 1 in 100, that's an awesome set to have. Um, but also, shout out to all the retailers who, you know, hey, they recognize. I may have been slow. Black to, Cape. Right, right. Black Cape has an amazing variant. Sold out. Uh, but a lot, a lot of retailers who realize, hey, man, I was late to the party with issue number one. I'm not missing again with issue number 11. They jumped on board and really, really went hard. Up some amazing artwork, some amazing variants. And I've said this for the better part of a year. Like, Erica Slaughter is my favorite independent comics character. I think that this character is made for mass marketing. And getting to see all this awesome variant covers uh, with her featured up front and center. And so many of them exactly with the result being what you said about black cape comics amazing variant which is sold out people just love this book and love this character and they keep buying it yeah we're sticking with boom and going into the next one the reader buzz and we get that new dune number one book yeah and i brian and i are two dudes we've had this conversation before dune like was not our thing it missed us um, so we are never been the types of dudes who pretended to get hype about this but it's also one that i want to give people credit like uh, I had doubts with, uh, you know, movie adaptations haven't always been the strongest, but this book seems to have solid momentum. People seem to be interested in it. Uh, it went to a second print. There's even a second print incentive, uh, another book where there's some cool, um, uh, exclusive variants. So, uh, you know, this, this was another one. I think it's a good day for boom with their number of releases between something's killing the children. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, 55, uh, and then Doom. What a day. Yeah, the last one on the reader buzz. This is one that I was definitely looking forward to since previews, since last call, FOC. But Image hit us with that scumbag number one. Yeah, this is I, another one where I feel like this could be the sleeper. Because when this book initially got uh, um, solicited to us, right, we talked about even an exclusive variant for it, and we kicked around some ideas, and we kind of didn't push beyond. I almost wish we did, though, because i got to say, Image Comics has been an amazing company to work with thus far. We've, we had some, some shortcomings early on, but Image has been some of the best products, I feel like, that we've been able to put out. And I think Scumbag is going to be another book that's going to really deliver, but it may get overlooked with the, the multitude of releases in today. And the thing that we did not talk about when we initially talked about producing a scumbag variant is the incentives that later on got added to this whole thing, which I think make this book very attractive, including that Jerome O'Pena Star Wars movie poster homage and the gold foil version. Um, I think that these are going to be books to pay attention to. And this is one of those things like we've seen, uh, you know, Rick Remender is certainly a writer who has gotten uh option before adapted before i think that this could be a book that's just weird enough and just different enough to catch people's eye and i mentioned on the last call show cover a it stands out it stands out on a comic shelf it's going to be one of those books that even if you didn't go to the comic shop to pick it up you're going to pick it up and look at it and that's kind of half the battle definitely and i mean all you gotta do is like like we said during the last call the creative team behind this who Rick Remender, I mean, Deadly Class, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what, Black Science, who wrote Black Science as well. Some great books there, plus so many others. But that's going to wrap up the reader buzz. So now we're going to move right over into the variant buzz for the week. Mm -hmm. 
first book we're talking about in the variant buzz is that savage dragon 253 that cover b variant right yeah and savage dragon long history of political covers um now we're not going to get political in this show i beg you to please save us with the political comments in the in the comments section but i can't control it but we're going to talk about the fact that in comics there's a long history of parodying political stuff now we we try to avoid those like uh you know the donald who laughs books and stuff like that where it's you know but when it's mainstream books like savage dragon putting um joe biden and camilla harris on the cover of a variant that that makes news because first of like the spider-man obama books exactly because this could be our next president and vice president uh for all you know uh it could be uh two future presidents or it could be a footnote in history if these people end up losing the upcoming election in November, which also is important because so many times, you know, we're get so wrapped up in each individual election. And it's like, you know, imagine if there was a book from the eighties with Michael Dukakis on it or somebody like that, you know, you wouldn't, you're not going to put the, it wouldn't be the type of thing where that would seem weird now at this point. So, um, it's a significant thing. It's worth noting. And I think that uh, it's, it's these types of things, whether or not it's been covers with uh, featuring Donald Trump or Barack Obama or uh, Hillary Clinton that have gotten national attention in the past and they tend to get at least short-term spikes. Um, furthermore, uh, we see even long-term like with Spawn, um, the Obama wins and the Mitt Romney wins covers are now coming into popularity again with this election cycle. So you never know. It's important to talk about. And it definitely got people talking about Savage Dragon. And I got to give them credit. 250, 252, and 253. We have been talking about them uh, due to at least one cover they've released. So, I mean, hey, shout out to Eric Larson. I'm not even a big Savage Dragon fan, but I like that uh, Charlie Brown one they got coming up. Yeah, yep. But the next one on the variant buzz, we're kicking around some Peach Momoko at DC for the time being, because we all know she's about to be exclusive to Marvel. But we got that Teen Titans number 46 variant. You're going to see so much Peach Momoko over the next month. And I know people are like, oh, I've seen so much. So much. <laughs> so but, more than we have. <laughs> but yes, you're going to see more than you've ever seen because every, as soon as this Marvel deal starts, you, you have like X number of time to use your whatever existing like boom's got a contract so they've got a set number of covers yeah. that they're going to release everybody else they've acquired artwork from her they've got like x amount of time to 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 use this artwork or to 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 get new covers and so i know like she's got a uh ninja turtles exclusive with a retailer coming out uh we're going to see several dc cover bees from peach momoko over the next uh, uh couple weeks um, I think that I've seen some other publishers that look like they're rolling out Momoko stuff heavy. And I think that's what you're going to see is anybody who has commissioned her over the last several months, who's been waiting to put out product or realizes this may be the last chance they are going to throw out Momoko and who can blame them because um, any cover that she does at least gets attention. Yeah. I think it's crazy. I'm going to take us off track here for just a second, but it's crazy we talk about how all these Peach Momoko books and we talk about these variants. We talk about limited quality, quantity, you know, 200, 300. But what I don't hear people talking about, and we know trading cards are coming back. Trading cards, you, you might think all oh, the trading card game has gone away, but trading cards are coming back. Everyone's aware of it. They have some of those Marvel trading cards that are one of ones that you don't hear people talking about. No, and you and I have had this conversation and we, 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 we've kind of pondered this. Um, she's done, and she puts them all over social media. She does exclusive sketch, one of ones. They are true, 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 limited, only one that exists in the world. Um, and these cards will regularly sell on eBay for, I mean, far below what some of her one in 1,000 print variants go for let alone some of those 500 300 and some of it's like um you can consider it original art because it'd be like sketch cards it is original yeah it absolutely is original art so um you look at the fact that it's original art it's signed by her it's not like a cgc thing where you need to get the signature authenticated it's already been authenticated by upper deck um so you can immediately send that into grading from psa or bgs or sgc who are the three predominant uh trading card grading companies and all of them would authenticate and grade the signature um, because it's already been authenticated. And so 
I haven't seen that done. I haven't seen that move make its way into comics, but I think that's a great point, Brian. And even the Peace from Local base cards, yeah. um, there's no added value for them. So I see base cards selling for like a quarter each or 50 cents each. And I haven't seen anybody yet realize like, well, there's all kinds of Peach Momoko out there. Yeah, just something that you don't hear a lot of people talking about. But either way, back over in the comics, the next one on that variant buzz list. We got that X-Men number 12. It has a second print this week. Yeah, Summoner, That's what the, the, this cover is very cool. Um, the character is one some people are invested in. So this is one of those no-brainer late prints. Uh, it's going to immediately sell out. It may have some legs depending on the character. Um, and it's just one of those things. It's, it's kind of a lottery ticket thing like Brian has talked about. But it, it's an added value of the fact that, like, if you already were thinking about the Summoner as a character, um, these later printings are shorter print. A lot of times the cover art is better, um, certainly in this case. So, uh, you know, you, you get a little, little, a little lottery ticket with legs. Last one for the variant buzz. We got Spider-Woman number five. This had several great variants for it, right? We've talked about this on the last call show as well. Yeah, I think this is like Spider-Man 100 in the legacy numbering. So, um, which I still think they, I love the legacy numbering. They mark it like shit. So yeah. it, the, it, the fact that people just don't know it um, is, is a problem. But I had to put several because um, the Peach Momoko variants were kind of the standout. They were the most talked about. There was a regular price as well as a virgin. But there was also, a, I think, a, a Gron off that was talked about. Um, you know, there was uh, several, several incentives um, that were discussed with this one. And I tell you, Marvel, one thing they do well is, is they know how to take these female characters and on the right covers, like really go heavy with the right cover artists. So there's a ton of great covers. This is one where you can kind of pick your poison. Uh, it is, there's one for every art style. So if you're like one of those people who I said, like the Momoko version is probably the most talked about. But if you were like, oh, I hate Peach Momoko, there's definitely a cover you're going to like. And we know that Spider-Woman is coming at some point to the Sony version of the MCU. We know that the Spider-Verse is coming. Um, so there's, there's definitely a lot more interest in this character than there was, uh, say, a couple years ago. So this it's cool. It's a landmark issue. I wish that the landmark issue uh, of it, like right, just the regular like reader buzz of it, was strong. This, to me, feels like, and I hate to do it, but what Marvel does with a lot of like their, their, their female stories where I feel like they're not Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel are exceptions. Those are carrying some solid reader buzz, but sometimes it feels like they release books like this or black hat just simply to release these variant covers that are going to get everybody's attention. So there it is. We've so far, we've talked about first appearances. We've talked about reader buzz and variant buzz. So that's just going to leave us now with Jack's long-term play. <laughs> And we got a little trend going on with this Bolo list recently. Another long-term play. This is a book that we talked about at the beginning of the show. And we're talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 55. Yeah, and so we did already talk about this a little bit. So you guys already know the information on it, right? You already know why this book is important. But here's why this book is the long-term play for me. Um, now, TMNT 110 is maybe the more obvious play, right? That's the one that most people are going to say today. I'm going to laugh at most of you who are going to say that because I'm going to say that the same people who are going to say that are the same people who would have laughed at me three months ago for picking a TMNT first appearance. But that's all well and good. But I want to remind people, I've really been reminded why we watched the first uh, Bolo show uh, the other day and the very first long-term play uh, ever was Avant Garde's A Boom Book, which is now getting some serious movie and TV buzz. Um, but it was a book that was considered probably by many people who would watch the show. I, I missed Don, right? But I think that's the point is it's, it's not even two years later and now it's getting ready to be looked at for option from say a Netflix. And suddenly now that, that long-term play looks more solid. And I think that's what people have to remember when we're talking long-term. So if you're looking short-term, uh, yeah, TMNT 110 is on fire right now. But if I'm looking long-term, and I don't even have to look as long as, say, avant-garde. I can look into the next, say, month, uh, or excuse me, four months, uh, the next quarter of the year. And I can say that, well, Boom Studios, they have a brand new uh, Power Rangers series launch. And it's, it's splitting into two. It's going to be a big story. And in one of the titles, one of the central storyline of the, the first arc, which will have the largest amount of reader eyes you can physically have as when you kick off a new series with a new art is going to be about the story of this 
Green Ranger, and specifically about the mystery behind who is the Green Ranger. And all of this speculation and talk about who is the Green Ranger that's going to happen over the next several months uh, until the, I guess, inevitable reveal whenever issue that happens um, will result in, again, this book being talked about and referenced. And that is just a natural thing that's going to keep it in the lexicon uh, of, of, of Power Rangers collectors. And again, this is, not, this is definitely a niche collectible. It's not a mainstream collectible. Not every person is going to put value on a new Green Ranger. But because of the smaller print run that is done in Power Ranger books, in comparison, the final issue. Yeah, especially the final issue, uh, in comparison to books that are done, uh, you know, by the big two, it's, it's not even, it's not even close. And we're talking about a major member. Uh, I mean, this is, this, and, and uh, kind of like the leader or the right hand of the leader, kind of however you could kind of view people go back and forth. If you're a red Ranger guy or a green Ranger guy, but, Either way, this is significant. Um, and my Power Ranger people who I, I, you know, I really rely on to kind of keep me you know, tuned into what the community, the real Ranger community is saying, whether it's uh, Steve Berglund from Berg's Family 54 Comics, who has done some work with the channel, who is an absolute expert in Power Rangers, or Dustin and Nick over at Two Brothers Comics, who is an, another great YouTube channel. Uh, and these guys, Power Ranger fans, they're all so extremely excited and invested in this storyline from a reader buzz standpoint that I think that it, as a smart investor, you have to look at this issue and realize that um, this one may have some long-term legs. And if people like the character or they're shocked by the character, or even if they hate who the character ends up being, this being that first appearance is going to get be the book that everybody's going to want. Again, a unique situation of boom allowing for like retailer exclusives to have the character on the cover. You've got some real unique collectibles. Now, certainly I can pump ours, our Jung Young Yoon cover. I'm extremely proud of it. I think it's an amazing cover. Another cool thing about it that we tried to do is we limited it to a thousand copies by doing trade dress versus a virgin. Yeah, some, vir some people have released virgin covers that have 500 trade dress, but the virgin covers that you're going to see are going to be 25 to 30 retail. What we were able to do is release this as a trade dress and release it cheaper by doing it that way. Thousand print run for fourteen ninety nine. So, um, and then if like you absolutely, you're like, you know what? I gotta have the rarest of the rare. We have a limited to one hundred virgin uh, copy of this uh, cover. So, you know, we we this was one. Uh, you can say I'm picking it because I did an exclusive, but we also did an exclusive for TMNT 110. And this was kind of one thing that we were trying to do with exclusives is we were also trying to pick books that we felt like we didn't want to be short term, right? We didn't, we wouldn't want to be all about buying and just selling during the pre-order period. And that's it. Uh, we had some great advice from one of our mentors in the comic book industry who told us, you know, don't be scared of back issues. Don't be scared of of carrying inventory so because of that we aim for books that we feel like in the long run people are going to want and we use the that speculative skill in our retail variant production and because of that i feel very happy about that so whether or not you buy our variant or not is really irrelevant to this case the truth is i think that mmpr 55 is a book that was going to be talked about a lot over the next four to six months and I think that it has a great shot of going up in value. And since this book is still readily available at cover price and cover A, as well as its incentives at or below ratio with a Draken, uh, the Chris Anka trading card variants, the one in 10 trading card variants, which Brian and I, in full disclosure, have not loved, but have both said the Draken one is the one we were waiting for. You get a cool Draken trading card variant, as well as a one in 20 Jamal Campbell uh, variant. Uh, those are books I would be on the lookout for, as well as these awesome store exclusives. And there's a number of them beyond just ours. Yeah, and like we always say, like most people, like me as well, initially think Mighty Morphin from Power Rangers. You think kids show or uh, bad dub <laughs> Japanese yeah. television. But the comic is so much better. I came on board, started reading the comic book and, and loved the comic book way more, way more than I could ever watch that show. But Either way, there's Jack's long-term pick. And there's our BOLO list for this week. As always, let us know what books you guys picked up this week, even if it's not on this list, because it's one big community. We like to see what everyone else is reading as well. With that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.